There are things that go bump in the night. Unexplained mysteries in the world. You are told there's no such things as monsters. But <laughs> we know the truth. Ghost, monsters, demons, all the unnatural exist. Be afraid and sit back. Welcome to Pop City Culture, ghost to ghost. <laughs> What's up, y'all? It is your boy, Reggie, the Pod God. <laughs> That's right. And I'm here for another episode of Ghost the Ghost, man. It's like our third year doing it, man. I'm going to tell you, man, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. But before that, I'm going to introduce you to my brother from the same mother, Hakeem Brown. <coughs> I hope you'll be doing this all through the show, man. Thank you, you know? there, <laughs> Reggie. And uh, yeah, I... I can you believe it's our third year doing I, this? I cannot and I think believe we've been it. We've been here for about or a little bit, a little bit over <laughs> two years. Man. Up. I know. And we have such a huge following of people who love what we do, man. Yeah, and that's what I like. A lot of people come in here for the love and the yeah, story. I'm, I'm you know gonna tell you, I, I really love doing this podcast and stuff. And, and you know, mm. you know, we we do it all for y'all out there. Yeah. You know, <laughs> all y'all kids, everybody out there for you. Uh, some of you adults. Yep, yeah, we give y'all <laughs> some a of shout adults, out. They be giving us. Uh, <laughs> Heavy feedback, but yeah, I even like what we're doing. You know what I'm saying? Mm, I but anyways, saying. Reggie, you got you got something to say about this year's Halloween? I sure do. It's gonna be the scariest. These stories we got coming up. I can't wait. Yeah. To hear so Reggie, what? are you gonna be getting some candy tonight and stuff? I am definitely getting me some candy because you know it's free, <laughs> and I definitely want to be eating a whole lot of sweets if Dad don't take my candy. Yeah. You know? So yeah, I'm, I'm I'm hoping to go out and. Uh, do some trick or treating. Well, I didn't ask you if you're going out. You asked me if I was going out. But yeah, maybe we can go out together. What do you yeah, think? I want to get some candy. But uh, you know what I noticed? I noticed every year Dad says he has to go through the candy. I know. And then all what the, does he do? He eats it. He steals it. <laughs> <laughs> What's he do? He steals takes all the good ones, man. What yeah, you but think, you know, hey, I'm, I'm going to have to tell everybody out there. All, 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 all y'all out there, you know, listen to your parents uh -huh. because, you know, they got to go through the candy. They got to make sure it's safe for you. And you know we all we all know they be trying to sneak one or two in their pocket because one or know. two man they be stealing more than one they be stealing all the good ones man you know the like the Reese's yeah, so peanut butter and cups and all those ones first you know? of all we want everybody everybody out there all you kids out there to mm -hmm. be safe be safe now that's the number one thing be definitely safe definitely be safe take listen care to your yourself. parents don't go wandering out don't be doing that stupid stuff no you know? stay together and, man uh, Tra traveling pack like a wolf pack this is ghost to ghost ghost to ghost so get prepared <laughs> for some scary. Kids friendly Ooh. stories. Yeah, yeah. We, I mean, <laughs> we good. we don't get gory and stuff. Now, we, nah. we may mention somebody died and this and that, but we 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 we, we try not to get gory because we know what a lot of kids listen to our show. Mm -hmm. So you know, and a lot of our shows entertaining. Yeah, and we don't want people like like giving us bad reviews either. You know what I'm saying? We like to keep everything on up and up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and we do it all for you. We bring it all for all you. All for you all. And we love you. With that being said, what we gonna get. To our oh, stories. Right. That's what I just that's <laughs> that's what I'm already. talking about. What? Uh, this here came from a girl named Beth. Mm -hmm. And uh what? and this is a story that she She what? She what? She what? She what? Uh, sent in. Okay, you gonna read it? So we are gonna talk about this. Uh, you know, a lot of these are short stories too. They're not super long ones. Mm -hmm. But one thing is, you know what they are, Reggie? Real. They're definitely real, right? They're, they're true. Yep. True facts. They, 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 they're true, <laughs> Reggie. <laughs> yes, I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> oh, it's so. I, don't, so, I said, I said shut this up. This one here is story. called What? What? It Wasn't a Little Girl. All right. I was camping with my husband and his family at a small, remote lake in New Mexico. There were about 10 people in our group and another group of six people in the next campsite. It was nighttime, and both groups were doing typical activities. Making s'mores, having a few drinks, and telling stories. When we all heard what sounded like a little girl yelling out for help. Neither group had children with them, but we were all positive we were hearing a little girl and decided to search the area we heard the noises coming from. There was a field behind our campsite, and we all saw a very tall, pure white figure standing maybe a hundred feet away from us in the field, making the noises. 
We all agreed this thing looked maybe six feet tall, skinny, and white as can be. We made our way closer to investigate, but whatever it was that we saw started backing off as we got closer. And it disappeared into the trees. All night, we continued to hear a little girl calling for help as we tried to sleep. Oh, man. I don't know if I'd be able to sleep after something like that, man. That <laughs> Reggie, is way too scary, that is man. Good. Reggie, can you imagine going camping, doing that? Man, black people don't go camping. <laughs> Wait, you know? Reggie, what are you talking about black people don't go camping? Man, you know what I'm saying? Black people don't well, go camping. What do black people do then? Go to hotels? <laughs> <laughs> Reggie, I know what? a lot of... A lot of black people who go camping, so I don't know what you're talking about. I don't about, know what you're talking about. Okay? Who? You know, who? Uh, we we know Soren. Soren, our friend. We know Naylan. They, they go camping really? with the grandfather all the time. I didn't know that. Yo, yo, we're we going to give a shout out to them. Yep. Soren and Naylan Ray, we're going to give a shout out to y'all. Our boys. Hoping mm-hmm. you guys have a good Halloween, a safe one. That's right, man. It's all about being safe. Yeah. Y'all know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Naylan's tall now. Did, have you seen I, him lately? I have seen him. He's like over six yeah, he's feet. He's really tall. Yeah. He's, he's almost he's, tall uh, as his dad. He's like a senior in high school now, getting ready to wow. go to college and stuff. He's moving so, on up. Soren's out of college. I don't know if you know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I knew that, man. <laughs> when you stay up all right, all right, all right. Man, it's so, ridiculous. What? What do you think of that story? I think the story was scary, but I still say black people don't go camping. Reggie, okay. black people go camping. Why you got to say stupid stuff like that? Everybody goes camping. Does dad go camping? Have you ever seen dad go camping? Uh, actually, I don't think dad <laughs> went camping in his life. No, wait. Dad what? dad went to summer camp, so he went camping, right? Uh, if he went summer no, camp, I don't think I guess. he likes camping, but that's because he, he doesn't like bugs. He don't like the bugs. You know, you know that, he, yeah. If you go camping, you're going to have to put up with the bugs, right? Get bit by them all. That's right. Nobody all wants right, that. All right, Reggie. Whatever, <laughs> Reggie. Get So bit anyways, by nothing, nothing. you ready for the next? Are you ready? What? Reggie, are you ready for the next story? Yes, I am. Reggie, mm-hmm. what? are you ready? Yes, I'm ready for the next story. <laughs> man, get to it, man. Okay. Go on. Here's the next one. Okay. Hold on to your chairs, kids out there, because this one is called The Walking Dead. I'm a psychiatric nurse, and early in my career, I worked at a residential mental health facility. One of our residents was an elective mute, which means that he didn't, wouldn't, couldn't talk. But there were no medical reasons as to why. He had spoken earlier in his life and in fact seemed quite normal back then. With the exception of being close to seven feet tall, he'd been raised in the Deep South and joined the military when he was 19. But one night, he vanished. He was declared absent without leave, AWOL. And eventually, he was declared missing and dead. Ten years later, a seven-foot man walked into a VA hospital emergency room in my part of the Midwest and said to the receptionist, my name is Marianne Duchenne. That wasn't his real name. And I've been dead for 10 years. Those were the last words he ever spoke. He was covered with dust, and he was wearing the same clothes he'd been reported wearing the night he vanished. His social security number had not been used, and he had no identification on him. However, they were able to identify him. I guess by fingerprints. The family was notified, but they said they had already grieved their lost man and that whomever was claiming to be him simply could not be. They demanded not to be contacted again. Marianne paced all day, every day, moving his mouth and looked like he was talking or muttering, but no sound came out. He had an unerving habit of throwing his head back with his mouth wide open as if He were laughing heartedly, but not even a breath could be heard. If I talked to him, he appeared to listen, periodically throwing his head back in that laughing, mimicking way of his. Various medications were tried, but they did not have any effect on him, either positively or negatively. Occupational therapy did nothing, because Marion would just grin, and unless told to say, put, He'd get up and start pacing again. On my last day at that job, the last thing I saw was Marion pacing in the parking lot, throwing his head back to laugh. Later, I wondered if all along I'd been dealing with a ghost. Because 
When I looked back, he vanished in thin air. All these years later, I still question myself. I still don't know. Oh my God, that is too scary, man. That's like a real ghost, Reggie, man. Reggie, can you imagine that being a ghost walking in and then <laughs> vanishing? I, I what, Vanishing? Why would I imagine that? And stupid. A lot of people see it. Man, I know. Oh that's, my. that's what I'm saying, man. That's crazy. <laughs> Reggie, <laughs> that's crazy. I would have a heart attack. I'd have two heart attacks. I man. would have, have a, a heart attack. I'd have a heart attack. I would I, have a, a heart, heart attack. attack. <laughs> I mean, that is something. It's no racism. way. I, uh -uh. Mm -mm -mm. Goodbye, Felicia. You ready? You? What? No, no. I would say bye, Felicia. <laughs> <laughs> know what I'm saying? Know what I'm saying? Man. Okay. So we we don't give you we don't give you another one. How you like the story so far? Man, these stories are off the hook. Yo, yo, you know yo, yo, yo. Look, what, look. What? The 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 uh, the uh, phone boards lighting up. A lot oh, of people oh are saying goodness. they like it. They love it. Yep, I see it, hey, man. Hey, 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 let me check the emails. Uh, no, yeah, yeah, check them, check them. Tell, tell oh what they're saying. Oh my God, man, emails are coming in. They're blowing out of style, people are saying man. They love this stuff. They sure do. Oh my. Because <laughs> the stories are cool, man. That's why. I hope everybody can sleep tonight when they come back getting that, getting that, uh, getting all those. Uh, Free candy. I'm, free can the free yeah. candy of the year. Award. I, I love free candy, man. <laughs> just just wear a costume. You can't give me enough free candy. They should have this like twice a year. Hey Reggie, Halloween. so what? I'm I'm gonna read I'm gonna read another one. Okay, okay read it, read it, because I gotta hear this. Go Th on, this on. one here looks looks like it's sort of long. You, you want me to read the long ones or, or short ones? Short short ones, short ones. Read a short or, one. Or, 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 I'm, I'm gonna skip that one. Right. I'm, I'm gonna read this one. <laughs> okay. It came for us in the graveyard. We were driving my friend's really old, beat-up Subaru through a massive graveyard. We stopped and walked down a hill and came across a little pond. There was someone sitting on a rock on the other side of the pond. The figure was all black, and we couldn't make out any features other than the fact that it looked like a man who was wearing some old-style top hat. We stupidly waved and shouted, Hi! He didn't show any acknowledgement and continued sitting still on the rock. All of a sudden, he jumped to his feet, started running to us on the water, and then vanished in thin air about halfway on the pond. My friend and I screamed and ran back to the car. The car wouldn't start, and we had heard something banging on the back of the car. It wasn't a constant bang, but every few seconds or so, we'd hear it. <clears throat> Nobody was outside from what we could see in the dark, but something was making a noise on the car. I opened my phone and started dialing my mom to come give us a boost, but I had no service. There was no signal. None of us had any cell service. The next 30 minutes were spent trying to get her car started. No banging was heard afterwards, but we felt this heavy pressure around us. Finally, the car started and she hit the pedal to the metal. We sped out of the graveyard so fast, immediately crossing the gates. All of our phones regained cell service. One thing I know for certain is that someone or something was out there, and it was not an animal or a human. We stopped the car and looked back towards the gate, and we could see many figures behind the steel gates. It looked like they were crawling out. They looked like demons with long arms and claws, and they were laughing hysterically. We sped out of there so fast, we didn't know what to do. To this day, I can't get the picture of the demons trying to get out of the graveyard. And I wonder if any of them Followed us home. Man, oh my God. I wonder if they were followed home too. Yeah, man. that was scary. that was oh my uh, you uh, know uh. why why would you go to a graveyard? <laughs> why I, I would you go I wouldn't to a graveyard. Stupid <laughs> <laughs> I mean I know. Oh my god, that is that's scary. You know, there is no no way mm -hmm. would I be caught in a graveyard after dark. Well, if you're dead, you'd be in there, right? Hey, shut up. Of course, if I'm dead, I'm going to be in a graveyard. But I'm talking about in a what? graveyard after dark. Mm. Dude, that stuff's just scary. It's way too scary. I mean, I don't know. I don't know how, I don't, what would possess somebody? 
what would possess somebody to do something like that? A demon possessed by a demon, probably. <laughs> Demons <laughs> would possess them? Yeah, ghost shit, man. Reggie, that's... <laughs> what? You don't think that's uh, true? You make a lot of sense, though. I, I make a whole lot of sense, 100%. You know, yeah, the only way you can be in a be, be there is if you're dead or possessed, possessed by a demon or, or a ghost, or, right? Or a ghost, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm totally serious. All right. I see it in movies all the time. So... It's got to be true, right? It's got to be true. Okay. I got... How, how you doing, Reggie? Reggie... Are you gonna be able to sleep I am in good. your room tonight? Because yes. I saw you. I saw you last night when I was sleeping. You <laughs> took your sleeping bag and dragged it in to my room <laughs> at the foot of the bed. Now I don't know what you think I'm gonna do if something's gonna gonna come at you in the dark. You're gonna save me. That's what you're gonna do, man. <laughs> what you think, R- R- Reggie? If what? I saw something in my room, I'd be jumping out there. I'd be jumping out of my bed, jumping mm. out my out my window to get away from the you house. You would leave me there? Are you totally yeah. serious, man? <laughs> Are you kidding me? What kind of brother are you? What kind of brother are you, oh, brother? Oh, man. Any, any, anyway, anyways. Move on. Anyways. Move on. Um, here's another. Okay. Here's another ghost story. I hope all you kids out there ain't getting too scared. If you get too scared, you can always turn us off and come back later and listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they can do that. <laughs> all right. All right. This one is called, what, what, It Was what? Good to See an Old Friend. When I was 37, I went to my high school reunion. I flew into the nearest airport and rented a car. The distance was about 35 or so miles away, rural and almost abandoned part of the country. About three miles outside of town, I see someone on the side of the road flagging me down. It turned out that it was one of the guys I had attended school with, Jim. But that's not his name. He gets into the car and we started talking. I hadn't seen him in 20 years, but he still looked the same, maybe a little older. We get to town and ask him if he wants to come in to the VFW and have a drink. He says, nah, just take me home. Jim's parents had lived only a few blocks from my grandmother's house, and I turned into the direction, but he said to take him to the outskirts of town. There was a mobile home park out there, and I figured this is where he lived. When we reached the end of the turn off, he said, just drop me off here. It was good to see you again. And he walked off into the night. Now, I go to the VFW, met some of my old classmates. We start to talk. And we were talking about who's coming to the reunion. I mentioned that I had just picked Jim up three miles east of town and had dropped him off. Everyone gets quiet. Even the guy singing karaoke stops and lays down the mic. My cousin goes white as a t-shirt. Barb, Jim died on that curb eight years ago. Rolled his car. We were all at his funeral. I was told I started to feel really dizzy and I wanted to get out of the car to take some deep breaths. There on the seat is the local paper printed eight years previously containing Jim's obituary. I still have the newspaper. Oh, man, come on. Are you serious, man? I don't know about that. That, Man. Yeah, he picked up a ghost. Oh, my God. If that was a ghost, man, it opened up the door. Man, man. that's something. How do you... Man. Man. But this is funny. The ghost must have opened up the car door, too. I just said that's stupid. So can ghosts actually touch stuff? That's the whole thing. Man, ghosts can touch stuff. You know, they they can do that stuff. How how do you know, Reggie? Have you seen a ghost? I've seen plenty of ghosts in my lifetime. I know, Reggie. How many? A million. A million. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, oh, man. Oh, man. Man, oh, man. Well, you know, Reggie. What, what, what? You you see a lot of ghosts, but. Yes. uh, I want to see no ghosts. Why not? I don't want to see no ghosts. Uh uh-uh. uh. No, no sir. Why don't you want to see ghosts? <laughs> uh, you scared? You scared? Hey, you know, Reggie, we're, we're, what? we're coming down towards the end of the show. I think I think we got one more one more story here. Okay, let me let me get I'm, I'm gonna read the last one. All right, I get it. This is I, called I gotta hear this. The Demon's Room. I worked as a forensic nurse in a hospital lockup unit. We had the older lady who swore she was being haunted and abused by a demon. She would call Tiberius. So many crazy things happened while she was on the unit. We'd go into her room, do normal care, leave. A second later, she'd start screaming, bloody murder. We'd run into the room to find her looking like she had been in a fight with a boxing champ. Bloody lip, black eye, markings all over her body. 
No one ever saw her doing this stuff to herself. Things would get moved around the room by themselves. At one point, she was in protective restraints because the doctor thought she was hurting herself. There was no way she could have moved or done anything to herself while in these restraints, but new marks would always appear on her tray, cart, and they would come across the room. The room was secure, so there was no way someone else was doing this. When we asked her questions, she'd just say, It was Tiberius. After she was discharged, we always had trouble with that room. If there was going to be a rapid response or code, it happened in that room. One night, a guard reported lights blinking on and off. It was in that room. And the guard didn't come out. So we went in to find him. And he was nowhere to be seen. He just disappeared. But on the wall, written in blood, was three words. It was Tiberius. Oh, man, say it ain't so. Oh, my God, that is too <laughs> scary. Reggie, that is... Oh that is God. just that is just too much. Why you got that, that why, is just way why you gotta way end too the show much. with something like this? I ain't gonna be able to sleep tonight. Man. This is ridiculous. Well, I'm gonna tell you by that what? that concludes Mm-mm-mm. our uh, ghost to ghost, ghost, to ghost. <laughs> for Holy. our Halloween special. I can't believe <laughs> celebrate Halloween very safe tonight, everybody. We yeah, want everybody. everybody to be safe. Be safe. And you make sure your parents check your candies because mm-hmm. you don't. You don't want any candy that's been tampered with or nope, no or sir. candy that's gone bad. Nope. And you, you know, actually, parents check your candy to make sure it isn't expired. You yep. make sure you give your parents what, Reggie? All your good what, candy. What, Reggie? All your good candy. All of what, Reggie? <laughs> All your good candy, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah you got to make sure you give them the candy so you're safe. And listen, we want <laughs> everybody to be safe out there. You know, you remember... So some of you towns have policemen who help go around and, and, and help kids escort them. Yep. Remember, cops are your friends. Cops all right? are our heroes, so, guys. That being said, we want to thank you for joining us here on Pop City Culture, the third annual Halloween special. Yo. <laughs> That's right. And thank you for making one of us. Thank you for making us <laughs> the most listened to podcast around the world. Our success is your success. And you can download our podcast any time of the day, morning, noon, and night. Mm-hmm. So, I'll see you next time here on Pop City Culture, where we give you three cups of sunshine and what, Reggie? And a pumpkin seed. <laughs> <laughs> Reggie, <laughs> what? 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 <laughs> oh, yeah, we're going to give you... Okay, it's, it's, we'll let that slide because it's, it's a, a Halloween, Halloween special. It's a Halloween thing. Anyways, as always, <laughs> be kind and affectionate to one another. Remember whose you are. Peace. Yo, man, you going to tell me that the guard wrote in blood it was Tiberius? Man, you know what they better, they better, they better, they better lock that room up and cement it with bricks because nobody should be going in that room because nobody should be seeing Tiberius, you know, and lock Tiberius up in there, yo. (laughs) Anyways, happy Halloween, everybody. See y'all later. We out. Peace.